Hi Chris, I'm delighted to see that you have now made the beautiful mistake. I'll explain in a couple of minutes exactly what this is. But first, a little bit of background, what this is all about, because you're making such wonderful progress. And I really truly hope that at least one of my daughters turns out like you. It looks like one of them is actually going to. So yeah, I'll be a proud dad as well. Now, most thinking people, and there aren't many of us, <laughs> but hopefully you were gonna teach a lot more how to think. But most thinking people go through three phases. The first is they're brought up in the assumptions of the family surrounding them at their birth. Whether this be Christian, Islam, Buddhist, Hindu, doesn't matter. The assumption is usually that, okay, well, the adults must know what they're talking about. This must be real. Then as one gets a little older and begins to develop the critical faculty, one begins to notice the discrepancies, the bits that don't work, the bits that don't make sense. And you begin to question. If you're courageous, you do. You begin to question. And by process of questioning and receiving either non or nonsensical answers, you begin to reach the conclusion that religion is by and large not a good thing for humanity. Now, the first step from there is to be an agnostic. It's a phase that a lot of us have been through. An agnostic, using the dictionary definition, simply means God doesn't exist but it doesn't matter. Then, as we dig a little further, we notice more and more what goes on in the world and the great hardships and troubles that for which religion is for and um, irresponsible. Then maybe we become an atheist. According to the dictionary, atheist means God doesn't exist and it does matter. Because religion creates so much suffering, it does matter that people are living in the, shall we say, delusion that it has something meaningful to offer. Now, I've stressed earlier on the dictionary definition of agnosticism and atheism, because there's a basic fallacy in the assumption there. The assumption is that religion actually teaches something about God, which is not true. The prime purpose of most religion is to separate you from God, to try to show you that you are not good enough to be in contact with God, that you need a class of special people called priests to communicate for you with God. Going a little step further, we have the Catholic Church, where the central teaching is that God, that God does not exist, but were he, note he, suddenly to come into existence, you would then need us to protect you from him. I hope you're very rapidly deducing from here that religion has nothing to do with spirituality. And this is the beautiful mistake. You've begun to apply the reasoning which shows that religion is not a good thing to spirituality. As you progress, you will find that this does not work. And at some point, you will come to the revelation. And this is the point at which you see the naked face of God. It will come to you. It came to me. It took some time. It doesn't come to all. Some get stuck along the way. This gentleman, for example, whom you may have heard of, 
Mr. Richard Dawkins. This book fell into my hand a couple of months ago at an airport. Airports are pretty boring places, as you probably know. And browsing around for something to do, this book, The God Delusion. So I picked it up. Uh -huh. Richard Dawkins is going to prove that God doesn't exist. Nice idea. So I had a quick word with my friend God and said, how is he going to prove that he doesn't exist? And God said, hmm, nice idea. Let's have a look at it. So I bought it and I began to leaf through it. And he starts off by enumerating exactly what he's going to prove in each chapter. And what he's going to prove in the first bit is he's going to prove conclusively that God is not real. It's just a delusion. OK. So we then go to this particular section and say, aha, uh -huh, let's have a look at his proofs. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. <sighs> you really have got things pretty screwed up, haven't you, Richard? Arguments such as Einstein didn't like organised religions, therefore God doesn't exist. I mean, you can only call reasoning like that completely dorkish, can't you? Now that's spelled D-O-R-K, by the way, Richard. It doesn't hold water. I mean, I don't like salmon pate. Does that prove that bread doesn't exist? It's the same type of reasoning you're using. So let us put this in the bin where it belongs because it's just a pile of tail biting nonsense. Let's get on with the real thing, Chris. Now, I'm not gonna try and push you anywhere because if I did, you would resist, and um, we won't want any resistance here. The message will be brought to you in a way in which you will comprehend it. And as when you do that, you will begin to recognise yourself. And it's going to be quite an interesting experience. Do let us know about it when it happens. Thank you.